there are 91 different weapons in Splatoon 3 as of the sizzle season. And I'm here to tell you one fake fact about each and every one of them. They're meant to be just real enough that honestly, you might believe them if you saw them on a random post. So come with me on this journey of lies. <laughs> The telltale pink spots of the 52 gal were a last minute design choice by Sheldon, added on to make sure any inkling would know right away if someone was carrying a 52 gal. Despite the name, the 96 gal is not any better at helping cephalopods find new gal pals to hang out with. And no, Ammonites won't give you a refund if you buy it for that reason. Because the 96 Gal Deco was one of the first Kraken weapons, there were occasionally Inklings who would buy it on accident and accidentally tear a hole straight through their door of their house when ink backing their front steps. Ugh. Some Octolings put so much effort into shining their Aerospray MGs that the weapon itself becomes very brittle. Next time you lose a game with an aerospray player, be sure to stop them if they start to drop their weapon in rage. Those are expensive to fix. Trying to make an aerospray RG so rusty that it looks like an aerospray PG is strictly illegal. Imagine what would happen if one of those splat landy in PGs, air quote, was left back in Inkopolis? Sprinklers? Instead of Burst Bomb? The horror. The first and only Anarchy Splattershot Nova model accidentally set the entire stage ablaze in the midst of a photo shoot. Seems like the idea was to tinker with their inkjet to let it stay in the air for longer than normal, uh, causing it to violently explode. Whoops. Inkling archaeologists were disgusted to find out that humans had their own ballpoints, but they didn't look anything like the ballpoint Splatling? Come on. Due to how often this happens, the Splatlandian government has been forced to make sure Inklings and Octolings pay a fine if they destroy a bamboozler. Please. Stop using them for your cooking needs. Some Octoling tried to forcibly attach a splash wall to the Big Swig Roller's roller, making it a great and permanent wall, but no longer able to roll. I don't know what their plan was, and I'm sure they didn't make it into Turf War with that. Unlike the original Big Swig Roller, the cup of the Big Swig Roller Express is sealed from the inside, so nobody is able to sneak in any bombs into anarchy matches. No, the inside of a blaster cannot and should not be used as a big drinking cup, even if you take it apart and clean it really well. Ammonites now has to confirm with every customer they don't plan to do this before they make a purchase. Collecting defective, unexploded blah blah or bubbles is not illegal by any means, but using them as confetti at a birthday party sure is. Where do people even get these ideas? Come on! The carbon roller's sleek design and strong build quality makes it a great industrial rolling pin. So great, there was actually a shortage of carbon rollers about three years ago that lasted for almost six months. Carbon roller decos have to be examined before every match to make sure no one is sneaking in one equipped with ink zooka instead of tri zooka by some nostalgic inkling. Melting down a clash blaster to steal the wax of the crayons is surprisingly easy due to how the elements separate when they heat it up. Don't try this at home though, please. Being one of the first super chump weapons, some octolings thought, hey, hey, what if we just take the chump? and attach it to the front of the Clash Blaster as like a shield or something. That Clash Blaster quickly had to be replaced. <laughs> An intricate wedding arch was made from the casings of over 300 squiffers. Why not just use plastic pipes? Beats me. Great money for Ammonites though. Keep it up. Attaching a super chump to the nozzle of the custom dually squelchers and boxing with them is considered a mostly harmless, fun outdoor activity. We say mostly to discourage inexperienced young inklings from getting any ideas. Please. Fanatics anticipating the return of the custom jet squelcher actually caused a shortage of yellow and blue paint for a couple of weeks in the Splatlands, mostly due to cephalopods repainting their homes or rooms in celebration. Because the custom Splattershot Jr. is so light, it's sometimes undetectable. And for some reason, it started a Tenetok trend of seeing how long players could sneak extra weapons into Turf War. 
Specifically custom Splattershot Juniors. I don't even understand this one. The Dapple Duelies may not be mighty, but that string that holds them together sure is. If it breaks in battle, the force of the string snapping is basically equivalent to a splat bomb going off. So do be careful if you keep one in your home, okay? A popular sport among Dapple Duly Nouveau players on their time off is to attach a Dapple to the mouth of their reef slider and see how far it flies away after it blows up. The hardest part is finding it on the ground. <laughs> Why can't you activate auto bombs manually in Turf War instead of right away? Well, one plucky Dark Tetra using Inkling a few years ago spent an entire match preparing a 95 auto bomb onslaught before releasing them all. And that's when we had to remodel the auto bomb to instantly activate. <laughs> One of the most popular accessories available on the Splatlands are keychains made to look exactly like a teeny tiny dually squelcher. The bright red color helps Inklings find their stuff easier in an oversized bag. No longer in-service dynamo rollers are often repurposed into industrial machines or construction equipment due to their great weight and fantastic crushing abilities. Next time you go to a local garbage disposal, see if you can find a dynamo roller in action in its second life. A popular summertime restaurant uses non-functional e-leaders for an ice cream eating challenge. Eat all the ice cream inside the e-leaders tank in one sitting and get free ice cream cones for the whole summer. Needless to say, most Inklings fail this test miserably. <laughs> the e-leader 4K scope is considered one of the heaviest, most dangerous weapons in the Splatlands. Not because of its excessive range, but because of how easily players turn around mid-match and hit their teammates in the head with the tank of the weapon. Be careful out there. The Explosher is way too hot to be used to cook eggs. Unless you want your Explosher to smell like burn eggs permanently after they violently explode. Flings a roller enjoying cephalopods get removed from matches more often than you'd think from, well, literally flinging their rollers across the stage. Please don't do that. The Forge Splattershot Pro was so underused a month after it came out that some nastier inklings started to call it the four jet Splattershot Pro. Rude. The Gluga Dooley Society was created in the Splatlands after enough cephalopods realized the kid of the Gluga Dooleys is exactly the same as the Kensa 52 gal from Megapolis. A haunted house Splatoween attraction last year scared absolutely no one. Why? The first ghost that showed up would be an inkling in a mask carrying a goo tuber who would yell goo <laughs> to anyone who got too close. Instead, visitors usually laughed. Oops. An H3 nozzle nose player was banned for four weeks after they unwrapped their entire hose mid-match and tried to use it as a new special weapon instead of his tactic cooler. Okay, buddy. A surprisingly large amount of red paint was purchased after the return of the H3 Nose D by nostalgic inklings looking to get really into that cherry Nose experience. Unfortunately, they all had to be washed before battle to prevent all that red paint from entering the battlefields. A rusty, heavy splatling is considered one of the most unappealing weapons in the Splatlands. Because of this, they're also one of the most lucrative weapons sold at Ammonites. Hooray! It's become increasingly common to see heavy splatling users awkwardly walk forward a few feet with their wave breaker in hand after spending too much time playing the heavy splatling deco. Off-brand versions of the Hero Shot replica are so common that anyone can pretend they're Agent 3 these days and no one will believe them, including Agent 3. A piece from the Hydra Splatlings barrel makes for a great replacement pipe in your home in a pinch. Good luck getting it back on afterwards, though. <laughs> Ink brushes are a commonly stolen weapon because the weapon itself is so light, they make for great at-home brooms. Like, much better than even most expensive ones at Barnacle and Dime. Someone has to make a better broom. An inkling was banned last week for trying to use their ink brush nouveau to whack their ink mines into the sky. Like little, uh, homing bombs, I suppose? I guess that's one way to set up mines fast. The jet squelcher is a tripping hazard, straight up. 
Inklings and octolings alike don't attach them properly to their backpacks on the regular. Next time you see this, please give them a hand. It's more common than you'd think to see Kraken Splat Roller players get their Kraken Royale tentacles tied up around a couple of their own beacons. It's considered less expensive to simply replace the hose of an L3 nozzle nose than to get it fixed due to how many crinkles and wrinkles it has. One cephalopod a week will return an L3 nozzle nose D to Ammonites because, to their surprise, it doesn't guarantee their ink will be the pretty light blue that's on the nozzle. Sorry about that. The light tetradulies are, in fact, about one pound lighter than the dark tetradulies due to not carrying a deployable reef slider. The perfectly spherical, smaller end of the Luna Blaster is such a rare part that thieves will try to just snip it off of Luna Blaster users while they're not looking. Be careful out there. A comic book starring a Luna Blaster Neo-wielding hero didn't last that long, as Inklings quickly got tired of his catchphrase, neo -ed any help? <laughs> Some cephalopods that visit Ammonites actually go out empty-handed once they realize the mini splatling isn't actually smaller than your average weapon. A tactic-cooler case does not make for a great hanging rack for NZAP85 players to leave their weapons. Unless you want to suddenly have no weapon in the middle of a tower control game. This happens at least twice a week. A summertime favorite among young Inklings and Octolings is to take a pile of NZAP 89s and see whose super chumps can cover the most ground when they're all fired. In different colors, of course. At the same time, leaving a Nautilus 47 out on a hot day is a great way to make a makeshift frying pan. It's also a great way to ruin your splatling. A few Inklings have tried to sneak in regular splash into battle, masquerading as splash Neos by shining them to such a degree that the average player wouldn't notice. Too bad Turf War staff see it after the first burst bomb. A savvy Neo Sploosh user tried to increase the power of their killer whale by amplifying the signal with their squid beacon. The blast was so strong that it blew a hole straight through the wall of Flounder Heights. Oops. Approximately 19 Octo brushes are returned every month to Ammonites from Inklings who still forget. No, there is no Kraken Royale Octo brush. That's an Inkopolis, guys. The pain brush has been carefully crafted to only become as fast as an ink brush if you remove every single bristle making it effectively useless. Someone tried to recolor a Range Blaster's flames, do absolutely nothing whatsoever to change the blaster, and then put it on the market at an inflated Strange Blaster price. It got no bids. Every Turf War map is equipped with sensors to make sure no one is firing weapons at a faster pace than usual. This is especially important for the Rapid Blaster, which has seen a lot of modifications over the years. In the last two weeks, 81 players have forfeited matches early due to getting sick from going too high up with the Rapid Blaster Deco's inkjet. We get it. It's fun to have a blaster weapon with a blaster special, but be careful. A way of removing pests from the Splatlands involves loading a Rapid Blaster Pro with its own toxic mist instead of traditional ink. It's highly effective, but needs to be done late at night. Community reception of the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco has been so high that sales of other angle shooter weapons have gone through the roof. So have, uh, returns of other angle shooter weapons. Ever tried shoving reflux arrows into a Tenta missile container before firing it off? Yeah, don't do that. I promise you, they fly way out of the battlefield and will net you a hefty fine. An unexpected demographic of S-Blast 92 purchases are parents who use a deconstructed and triggerless S-Blast as a makeshift noisemaker for their kids. Ever since the Repinicopolis emote was added in a recent season, the number of injuries from buckets landing on players' heads has gone up dramatically? Please? exercise a little more caution? A gathering of about 400 Slosher Deco players happened recently. Why? They wanted to see how tall of a tower of angle shooters and sloshers they could make before it all came crashing down from a stray jellyfish passing through. The sloshing machine makes for a great piggy bank. 
all those metallic edges really let you hear those coins when you shake. Inspired by human technology, aka mechanical pencil lead, some Octolings have tried to create illegally modified snipe writers that can hold more than five chargers. Or they would if the carefully inserted alarm system in every snipe writer wouldn't go haywire the second the barrel is touched. <laughs> Please do not attach the fine end of a splash o to an angle shooter. Just throw the sub-weapon normally. Please. We've had seven ink tanks explode mid-battle due to this just in the last year. The Slatbrella's gray design feels like a massive downgrade for Inklings and Octolings that came from Inkopolis. That's why the old models are used in off-the-books battles outside the city outskirts. Just watch out for the hefty fees if you get caught. The biggest problem plaguing Splat Charger users these days is the Splat Bombs in their kits. It's painfully common to see players just leave them behind after a match for someone else to find. No, you cannot put heating elements inside of defunct splat dualies to turn them into little hair dryers. Please stop doing this. Someone tried upgrading their plain old splat roller by attaching curling bombs to the sides. It was definitely a look, not a good one. <laughs> and it sure didn't roll. A tech-savvy pair of Octolings tried replacing all the stamp symbols on their Splatana stampers to spell swear words in human letters, hoping no one would notice. That lasted about four matches. They say a Splatana Wiper player never forgets their first quad splat. After all, it's literally called a wipeout. Some Splatana Wiper Deco Inklings get so ready to throw a torpedo that they don't even acknowledge the beacon they placed until they're actually already tripping over it. Yikes. A high-level Splatterscope player recently got kicked off his team for constantly giving away his location before he made a shot with his catchphrase, I Splatterscope you like this! The splatter shot is so common that if you search around a local trash dump, you're bound to find a few broken ones abandoned in there. It's a favorite of up-and-coming Octoling engineers when it comes to less-than-legal weapon modifications. Inserting blades on the side of the Splattershot Jr. to create makeshift apple slicers is forbidden. Apparently, this has happened four times this year alone. Huh? The Splattershot Nova's design appeal and early on popularity led to a short-lived telescope model being created that mimicked the design of the weapon. However, the company that made them didn't actually do very good with the build quality. So, um, yeah, they all broke. The Splattershot Pro may be somewhat aerodynamic, but it is not a makeshift baseball bat. And it will explode very violently if you use it as one. The Splushomatic's nozzle makes for a surprisingly sturdy cereal bowl. Please don't try to patent it though, you're not the first. The Squeezer recently underwent a hardware recall due to a firing issue with the main body of the weapon. All of the returned Squeezer bottles are going to be broken down into glass and turned into a new mosaic at Ammonites. So exciting. The Brella Shield fix may make the Tenebrella finally block shots, but it sure won't stop local Inklings from falling any slower after super jumping into the sky, Tentabrella in hand. <laughs> why, why, why is it always baseball news? Why are we doing this? One Tentacerella Brella wielding Inkling tried to play baseball with a, at the time, unreadied Inkzooka? However, the sheer force of the ball lit up the Inkzooka immediately, which backfired and sent that Inkling straight into the floor. Youch. A podcast called Tenta Talk Splattershot lasted about three weeks on Splatify before it was taken down. Why? Most viewers were disappointed it had nothing to do with weapons like the Tenetech, and instead was just a gossip podcast about Deep Cut and other splat bands. The Tri-Slosher doesn't actually stack as well as you'd think. 
The current record of tri sloshers successfully stacked one on top of the other is about 187 buckets, arranged carefully via well-controlled super jumps. Some Inklings have been caught trying to sneak in extra pre-charged fizzy bombs into battle in the compartments of the tri slosher Nouveau. Uh -uh -uh. One of the rarest items in the Splatlands is replacement tri stringer string. If you find some, please, please, please put it on VBay for a fair price. Its effective undercover umbrellas have been unsuccessfully converted into a myriad of items, including but not limited to trash can lids, frisbees, and even snowboards. They don't last long due to the weak shield no longer regenerating. Awkward. Two Octolings worked on a three-day-long project to see if they could modify a ZNF charger to fire splash wall components instead of shots made of ink. Why three days? Their supply of 30 chargers didn't last very long. Local ZNF players have put in multiple requests for scopes that can see through triple ink strikes to no avail. It probably wouldn't be fair, though, to do that. A reimagining of the classic human film, Snow White, is considered a so bad that it's good film amongst Inklings because the director decided to make every character... well... an animated weapon. And of course, the Zinc Mini Splatling was Snow White. So, how you feeling? Feeling pretty smart? You'll feel even smarter if you make sure to subscribe! <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I hope I gave you a giggle as well! Have a good one, and keep enjoying more Splatoon. See you later.